All right, everyone, uh, welcome. In this video, uh, probably be uh, you know the start of multiple videos in which we talk about creating structures in IDA. So uh, in order to do that, we're gonna spend a little bit of time here looking at some source or sample programs, talking about structures, talking a little bit about alignment and size and thinking about how they're laid out in memory, getting into IDA here, and then um, taking a look at um, how we can create structures in IDA and then map those structures to what we're seeing in the disassembly and, and in the, the decompiler. So we're going to use the latest version of the, the latest free version of IDA for this demo, which now includes and has for a little bit the decompiler. Uh, so we'll actually spend some time analyzing that as well. Okay, to get started, uh, I have on my GitHub repository, learning dash reverse dash engineering, a number of sample programs. And today, under control structures, we're going to be looking at structs.c. So going to grab this file, you can download it, um, grab it as a, as a raw file here. And uh, in this case, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about it using Visual Studio Code, just because I think it's going to represent the code just a little bit better. Now, there's two main parts uh, at the very beginning of the file is going to be the structures. And so the reason that there's going to be multiple videos here is we're going to talk um, about just the first, what I'm calling a line structure. And then, well, I probably have two videos on that, and that's going to be based around how the, you know, where the memory is allocated for that structure. And then we'll talk about the padded structure in, in the third or the fourth. The second really portion is then main, in which I'm doing some arbitrary things. Uh, so you can see there's going to be, you know, three of these structures defined, and the first one that we're going to look at, uh, and and the change from the the program that you're going to download from the GitHub is that I've moved this structure, which is using dynamically allocated memory via a call to malloc, I've moved this up and I moved this one below it. Uh, this structure is using the stack. And you'll see that uh, when we get to this, this will be the second video, it's a little bit more difficult to recognize a structure on the stack just because of how those members of that structure are, are defined. They look more like local variables rather than parts of a structure. Okay, so that's the only uh, the only change here. Uh, for this video then, we're gonna focus on this very first structure. So I'm gonna call this the aligned structure. And something to keep in mind here, what is a structure? Well, a structure is just a way for us to define essentially a contiguous chunk of memory and, and how that memory is actually aligned under the hood. That is, once we tell the compiler, compiler to compile the program, it may make some changes or modifications to it in order to optimize things. Maybe it might make it smaller or it might change the layout in order to make the reads better. It's going to do or prefer to do an alignments, four byte alignments, and then even offsets from there. So here you can see we have this aligned structure. It has four members, an integer, a short, and then two chars. So our integer is gonna be, this will be a 32-bit program, so it's gonna be four bytes. That means that it'll begin at the base of that structure at offset zero. So four bytes from that, four bytes later, on an offset of plus four, we're gonna have a short, which will be two bytes, okay? Since that's an even number of bytes, then char C can follow. That'll be one byte at an offset of plus six. And we have then char D, which is again one byte, and that's gonna come at an offset of seven. So in this case, we can just add these up, four, two, one, one, and we can anticipate that this structure, because it's it's really aligned by, by my definition, um, we can just add them up, we're gonna have we can anticipate eight bytes of total space for this particular structure. Okay, that's not always gonna be the case. That's why we'll talk about the padded structures here in the later videos. Okay, uh, to compile this program, I guess I already have already done that, but just to show you the command, I have Visual Studio Community Edition installed, developer command prompt CL basic structs.c. Uh, so no additional arguments here. This should produce our binary. And now we're gonna go ahead and get that opened up in IDA Pro. Okay, for the purposes of this demo, the only thing I did was close every other window except for the disassembly listing. So we can start, we'll start our analysis there. First things first, make sure IDA gets you into main. It's not typically a problem, especially when you've compiled something using Visual Studio, but it can be an issue from time to time. So uh, don't, you know, don't, don't overlook that and make sure that you're in the right location. And, uh, and then we can start to label some things. We have the source code. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use that to our advantage 
we have this local variable in z with a value of 99 that's what we're seeing right here we can right click we can change that from hexadecimal to base 10 so we'll just call this in in z uh, we have a function call and the only function call that this program is doing is a call to malloc so uh, Ida was not able to identify that for us, so we're going to do that, and that's helpful because then we don't waste any time analyzing that function if this were a more advanced or involved program. And in this case, too, it also helps us in identifying, well, a call to malloc is going to allocate memory. It's going to take one argument. That's the amount of memory to allocate. So pushing 8 means we're going to get an allocation of 8 bytes. Okay, so that, that really lines up with our initial discussion around that structure. Okay, uh, malloc's going to return a pointer to that memory allocation. So EAX, EAX typically going to be the register that has that return value. That's moved into var4. And so we can call this um, our align structure, I'll say align structure 01. Okay, let's, um, let's just continue in the disassembly view for a little bit longer. Okay. We have, we, we know that this is now the base of memory for that structure. Um, this is a local variable, EBP plus what we now call the line structure 01 is a local variable. So it's a four byte value that contains this pointer. And why I said, and why I, I changed the order of that program to look at these, um, you know, these structures that are using dynamically allocated memory first is because you can see in this next instruction, and, it, and the compiler decided to do a little bit of shuffling, so it's kind of annoying, but um, that pointer is moved into EAX, and then that is dereferenced via these square brackets, and I just saying, okay, at that, at that base of that allocation, we can move four bytes of data into that location. So, so 2B, or whatever that is in base 10, again, doesn't matter at this point, um, that first basically member then of that structure is four bytes. Right. Well, how do we know that that's a, a structure? Well, as we continue to analyze, okay, three gets moved into ECX. That's moved. That's used in just a just a couple of instructions later. But now we again we move that base pointer for that structure into EDX, and then at an offset of EDX plus four, we move CX into that location. So that's that's really the kind of the first indication here in the disassembly that we're dealing with a structure. Um, and, 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 you know, one step further now, we know that we have a member, another member at an offset of plus four, and we pretty much, or can be pretty confident on the size. Um, CX being the lower two bytes of the ECX register, that, that is an indication then that this member is only going to be two bytes in size. Okay. If we weren't a hundred percent sure though, if we continue to analyze, okay, we move the base pointer of the structure back into EAX. And then at an offset of plus six, we move the hex 63 or the, the C character, the lowercase C character into that offset. And, and Ida's telling us that at that location, we're only going to be able to reference a byte's worth of data, right? So that, that kind of confirms then that we have an int, then a short, and now a byte. And then we see that pattern here again. We move that pointer into ECX and then at an offset of plus seven, we move our lowercase d character. Okay, now uh, after that we have the XORing of EDX and EDX and now we're getting into this that stack based uh, structure definition. So we're going to stop there for this video, right? So this is all the relevant code. Uh, let's open up a couple of additional views. If you go to open um, view, open subviews, uh, generate pseudocode, that's Ida's way of saying show me the decompiler. So I'm going to open that and dock it to the side here. And then we're going to also open our structures window and I'm going to dock that into this view as well. Okay. So you can see that uh, perhaps in the decompiler, it maybe is a little more straightforward and that we have the call to malloc, you know, this return value being assigned to this local variable. And then from that local variable, that pointer to that region of memory, uh, it's being dereferenced a D word, a word, and then two bytes at a time, right? And then these are the, the you know the offset representations of what we just discussed in the disassembly. Uh, you can change these uh, representation of the data by right clicking or following the shortcut key. So if we wanted to change that to a char, we could do that. 
no need to do that, no reason to do that other than it just matches up a little bit better with the original source code that we were looking at. Okay, so we, we have an idea now, we've defined, we've, we've clearly identified a structure, or maybe we think we've identified a structure, we have a pretty good understanding of the, the layout. Uh, again, that structure wasn't meant to really do anything other than to help discuss structures, the fact that they're a contiguous region of memory, and then how we can identify their use. So the next step is to define that structure because this is a custom structure. So IDA allows us to add structures it knows about, standard structures. As you can see here, it already has a number of them that's just identified through its analysis of this binary, but we've identified something custom. So we're gonna right click into this window and add struct type, that also be the shortcut key insert. And now we can add our custom structure. So I'm gonna call this um, I believe I called it a line structure. Let me just double check the code. Yeah, a line structure. Okay, uh, if we wanted to add a, 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 a standard structure, so something that's already been defined, then we could go that route by clicking on add standard structure. But again, that's not what we're doing here. We're defining our own. Okay, that adds the structure to the end of the list. And now all we have to do, we need to start adding the members. You can see that the size of the structure is zero. It's empty because we don't, we haven't defined any members yet. So the way that I do that, move the cursor to the end of the structure, hit the D key. That will add a new field. And you'll see that the size is going to be byte. And then every time you hit the D key, you'll toggle through byte word, D word, and then back again, right? So we know that we want this to be the first member to be a D word or a four byte value. Okay, we need to add another member. So we can just go to the bottom of the structure, hit the D key again, hit it again. Now we have a word and then we can do that for our bytes. Okay, um, adding and defining structures can get a little bit tricky. That is if you mess up the alignment and that can be the case, especially if you're, you know, like this is a, a toy program that's exercised every member and done it in a very clear and concise way. But the, uh, that's not always certainly going to be the case. So you, you might start by identifying a structure and the beginning to define the members just to realize that maybe it's a little bit larger than you thought. Not all structures will use dynamically allocated memory. They'll use the stack. And as you'll see in the next video, using the stack can make it a little bit trickier to really understand the full size and full scope of a structure that you're working with. Um, so let's say that maybe we made that mistake and we just, we discovered that our second field is actually a D word. Well, if you try to change that by hitting the D key, I just going to prompt you and say, okay, if you do this, I'm going to convert, I'm going to convert. I need, well, we're going to go from a D word. We're going to go from, a, excuse me, a word to a D word. So it needs two more bytes. So in this case, it would actually consume field six and field seven. So if you want to do that, click yes, go ahead. And you can see it just really changed the, didn't change the size of our structure, but it changed the layout. Um, now, if we determine that we made a mistake, uh, well, if we need to add new fields now, we can just follow that same process, go to the end of the structure, hit the D key. Uh, if we realize, nope, actually this is meant to be a word, you can toggle back through, but now you have to go and add those members again anyway. Okay, so it, it can get a little bit, a little bit tricky. Uh, but it's not too bad. Now, uh, once we have our, our, our overall structure layout and you can see the size now maps matches up, right? In this, in this demo, because we saw the call to malloc, we know we need eight bytes for the structure. So I would make sure, even if I didn't understand all of the field layout, I would make sure that at least I had the eight byte structure defined. And once we do that, then we want to start to rename those fields. So you can highlight a field and press the end key and that'll bring up the uh, the name rename dialog and we'll just give these very generic names because that's really all these members are okay so we'll just go through those char one and oh, i'm going to call this uh, chart two okay now you can imagine if the structure that we are defining is more purposeful, right? Let's say this was the IPv4 address and this was the port that it was connecting to. And this, this had something to do with the socket that was created. That becomes more helpful because now if we know that that member represents an IPv4 address, we can more quickly identify that when we're performing our analysis, right? So again, I didn't want to get lost right now in the discussion on 
what does the member mean, but more about how to identify them, how do I build a structure, and now the last part is how do we use that structure definition in our disassembly and then our decompiler. So the easiest thing to do is you can now find where those members are being utilized. And if you right click, you have a structure offset. And this brings up a window that contains all of the structures currently in the database that has at offset zero, the first member of that structure, a four byte value. So you can see there's quite a few of them, but we can find our custom defined aligned structure here. Uh, and now that changes that from, instead of just being dereferenced EAX, it's EAX plus, and then that member, right? So think of the, again, just think if this wasn't just generic int member, let's say this was IPv4. Now we've had a, we'd have a much better understanding of the context around what this code is doing. Uh, we can continue just going to the locations where those members are used. If you type the T key, that'll bring up the structure offset window and we can just select uh, as you see here, just select the member that represents um, the the offset that we've analyzed, right? So now we've we've added much better context. Instead of just seeing plus six, plus seven, plus four, we actually map that to the member from our custom structure. So what about the decompiler view? Well, it makes things uh, certainly a bit easier. We can see the return value from our call to malloc is assigned to our, our local variable, which we called align structure 01. And from there, that's being dereferenced, dword, word, byte, byte, um, and offsets from the base of that allocation. So it looks you know, pretty similar to what we just looked at in the disassembly view, a little bit cleaner, I think, probably a little bit quicker to analyze and understand. But what if we want to apply our structure to the decompiler results. Okay, um, before we, we click into that window here, um, I also wanna point out there's a couple of ways to do this. Uh, you, can, you can certainly take and apply that structure offset methodology that we just did to each one of those members. Um, I also wanna point out that because we've now identified our local variable as a pointer to that structure type, you can see by default in the decompiler view, Ida just says, hey, this is an integer align structure 01. But we can change that type and say, no, actually this is a pointer to an align structure. And then Ida will do its magic and understand how that memory is being used and map the member offsets, map the members to the offsets appropriately. Okay, so I think the, the cleanest way uh, to do this then is if we highlight our local variable and use the right click menu, the Y key, set LVAR type, this brings up this dialog, and you can see that right now it's defined as int and then the name of our variable. But if we say aligned structure pointer, we've now changed, we've now changed that type definition. And when we click OK, you'll see that Ida now understands that type, and then it applies the member offsets for us automatically. So that now has cleaned up this you know decompiler view uh, quite considerably, right? So uh, changing the type Y shortcut key and defining it as a pointer to the aligned structure as uh, as really that's what it is. Okay, so there we go. There's our first video. Next video, we're going to continue and look at that same structure, but using stack space instead of the heap. So, you know, stack space versus dynamically allocated memory, and we'll go through really the same process. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to drop a comment in the video. And we'll continue to explore creating structures using IDAPRO.